Did you know that according to one survey, more than 70% of those who changed jobs regretted their choices? And that in another survey, a similar number said they felt trapped professionally and are unable to escape the vicious cycle of being stuck in a job that they don't love? Sounds strange, doesn't it? Quitting and changing jobs and careers is ostensibly a choice that's entirely in our hands. We choose when we quit, uh, what we do next and who we do it with. Then, how is it possible that most people are getting it wrong? If we choose what we do, it should make us happy, right? Or should it? The data seems to show that it doesn't. Is there a big hidden trap that we don't know about and is holding us back from making the right career choices? Well, there is and it's one that's complex to understand, hard to detect, and even harder to correct. I call this the subconscious imitation trap. It's a trap that can make us do things and make choices that we believe are our own desires, but in reality are possibly not. Today, I'd like to help you become one of the rarest of the rare who is able to see and avoid this trap and unlock success and happiness in your professional career, starting today. Hi guys, my name is Akshay Goenka and the team on this channel has learned sometimes painfully the art of avoiding poor career choices. But we didn't really have a channel like this to help us out and to make sure that you do, we are documenting all the secrets we found to success and happiness in your career. So if you hit the subscribe button below on this channel, we can begin this journey towards a happy and successful you together. Right, so back to it. When making career choices, there are many traps that we tend to fall into that stop us from making the right choices. And I have a separate video detailing each of those five traps. And in case you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link to it up here and down below in the description. But today, let's talk about the subconscious imitation trap. Understand what this means, why this happens, and what you can do to overcome it. If you invest the next few minutes on this topic with me and keep a pen and paper handy or a blank note on your smartphone open to keep writing down your thoughts, I think that together we can help make sure you don't join more than 70% people who reported that they feel unhappy and trapped in their jobs and instead choose the right career for you. Sounds like a good investment of time. Let's go. So what does the subconscious imitation trap even mean? Subconscious imitation is a tendency that's deeply ingrained in our DNA and conditioned into our brains where we may not realize it but our decisions tend to be based on desires that are not intrinsic to us though they appear to be that way but instead they tend to be extrinsic or external to us in that they're based on what we see others do. This tendency or behavior is based on the groundbreaking finding by the French philosopher René Girard and is also detailed in Luc Burgess's excellent book called Wanting. This theory suggests that all desires are extrinsic and not intrinsic. Girard's insight was that we look to other people all the time and that they form models of desire for us and at a subconscious level, we take cues from them and without always knowing that we're doing it, we imitate their behaviors. Now, in some cases, we imitate explicitly and even openly talk about it. Have you noticed that in the last few years, most men have gone and gotten the same haircut, uh, short on the sides, combed neatly on the top, Clearly, they didn't wake up one day and dream this up. It's based on the fact that footballers and movie stars and influencers all started to get this cut. Or the fact that uh, women have gone from wearing skinny jeans to flared jeans or wearing yoga pants every day. The founders who imitate Steve Jobs' famous outfit of a black turtleneck and jeans do so openly and with pride. Though, unfortunately, some of them are a bit more uh, forgettable than others. Because in all these cases, people are imitating celebrities who don't feel like competition to us in any way and feel quite out of reach. We feel no shame in accepting that we're doing this and even celebrated on platforms like social media. In fact, the whole notion of influencer and social media marketing is predicated on the fact that once we see a trend or a brand or a style on people we follow, enough times, we tend to develop a favorable disposition towards it before adopting it or buying it. 
That's why all your influencers get paid so much money. That's because they are what Jira calls external models of desire. And because they all seem like they can never be our rivals or competition, we are okay with openly copying them and celebrating it. It's totally okay to say, even Steve Jobs dropped out of university and started up, so why can't I? Or Barack Obama practiced law before becoming president and hence I think law could be a good career to start my political dreams. Or Kanye West wears Yeezys, so I will too. Uh, well, actually strike that one, I don't think anyone says that anymore. But the subconscious imitation that you don't know about or will probably even refuse to accept for a while even if I directly pointed it out to you is with people who are very much within your reach, your friends, your peers, your family, you will never catch anyone saying, my work colleague who I've unwittingly compared myself with for years has quit and started up, so why can't I? This is actually a good example. Every one of us has had that one friend who came to us one day and announced that they're going to quit their job and start up. They had a life-changing startup idea and realized their burning desire to actually build something tangible of their own. And then they quit their job and ran towards their dream with such idealism that it wouldn't be out of place in an Aaron Sorkin script. But don't get me wrong, this is not to say that starting up is a bad thing. For the right people with the right idea and execution ability, it's the single most incredible value creation opportunity. But it's definitely not something to be taken lightly or done just for the glamour and the glory. The big thing to figure out is whether it meets the test of the right career move for you or whether it's just a subconscious imitation of what your peers or external models of desire are doing. If you want a good framework or method to evaluate different career choices, then watch my video on that topic and I'll link it up here and down below in the description. But as I said before, if you are making a decision based on your subconscious imitation, you will find it very hard to even detect or accept, let alone correct it. It's hard to detect because there's no one person or one moment to actually point to. This desire gets built over time. Every article in the news about a peer or friend announcing their product launch, uh, or being interviewed on a podcast or raising another round of funding that get covered in the press has a small, almost imperceptible way of being incepted as a desire into our brains. The desire to see the same success or gain the same recognition and the same validation. Your ego and identity won't let you react to that fact in the moment when it happens or when you first learn about it. In fact, you might have ridiculed or brushed away startups as a fad or a reckless decision at that time. But as the brain slowly registers these extrinsic sources of desire, one day when your brain can trick you into justifying it as your own bubbles up to the surface, disguised as purely objective, extremely independent, and you call it your own. This is what Luke Burgess, who wrote the excellent book on this topic called Wanting, calls the romantic lie. It's the lie we tell ourselves that we are being rational and spontaneous when actually we're doing things because it's being modeled to us by someone else. There are examples of this all around in our personal lives. Every year we see so many things that suddenly everyone is doing and many times we get caught up in it ourselves. From everyone around us suddenly training to run more marathons or doing yoga to taking up vaping instead of smoking. Why does your ex-partner suddenly become more desirable to you when they start dating someone else? Why do so many people seem to like the most popular person in class? The answer to all of these questions and so many more is that they have something to do with subconscious imitation. We tend to want to do what others are doing whether we like it or not. The same thing happens in our careers and professional lives. It's why every technology graduate wanted to work at uh, Google or Apple in the first half of the last decade, but lately they all want to start up and join smaller, fast-growing tech companies. It's why every business school graduate rushes to join a top bank or a PE firm without thinking too much about it. That is why this year everyone is trying to start or invest in an AI company like ChatGPT, uh, when last year it was Web3 and the year before that it was crypto and so on. To be clear, these are not bad things. Many of these are amazing trends and opportunities. The question we're trying to answer is, what is right for you? And how can you make a choice to do what makes you successful and happy without subconsciously imitating others? How can you identify, detect and correct from the subconscious imitation trap? Now that you understand this, what does this mean for your job search? Can you somehow ensure that all desires are purely internal and not subconscious imitation? Well, you can't. 
But what you can do is start to be aware. It means that you should try and step back and take an objective view of every decision that your brain is trying to make and ask if this is truly right for you or driven by subconscious imitation. So before you make your next career move, ask yourself, are you investing in yourself and finding a bridge to a career that is both truly your passion and truly what you can be distinctively good at? Or are you just running in the direction of other people's desires, your friends, your peers, your parents, your competition and calling it your own? Well done. You've successfully conquered another trap that holds you back from making the right career choices. The other big trap that I've seen most common is the salary trap, which holds us back from creating wealth and being dependent on a salary that's never really going to make us rich. Watch my video on wealth creation next to make sure you apply the secrets of wealth. And before you do that, do subscribe to my channel to make sure you get all of the updates as we continue on this journey together towards a happy and successful you. See you on the next video.